Good afternoon, everyone. It's good to see you. I want to start uh, today with an update from Dr. Kara Christ on the latest of, on COVID-19, and then I'm going to come and I have some comments. We'll get an update from General McGuire, and then we'll be happy to take some of your questions. Dr. Christ. Thank you, Governor Ducey. I wanted to provide an update on the trends our public health experts are seeing in Arizona and steps everyone can take to protect their loved ones, especially with Thanksgiving coming up. Arizona, like the rest of the nation, continues to see a concerning increase in cases, percent positivity, and COVID-19 patients in ICU and inpatient beds. To date, a total of 283,102 cases have been reported to public health. And sadly, we've lost 6,365 Arizonans to COVID. Last week, the week of November 8th, all but two counties had a percent positivity above 10%, which meets the substantial category for percent positivity. And this week, we are trending higher. Each county also has a case rate that exceeds 100 per 100,000 people, which also meets the substantial category for that metric. Our COVID-like illness metric is trending upwards, indicating increased visits to the emergency room and admissions to the hospital for COVID-19. These metrics are heading in the wrong direction. My team is working with public health, hospital officials, and through public education and enforcing, enforcement of our existing mitigation measures to address the recent rise in cases. Last week, CDC released important updates to their mask data and guidance. Importantly, we know now that masks provide more protection than previously thought. The new studies recently show that wearing a mask can also protect you from the infectious droplets of other people. I can't stress this enough. We recommend that all Arizonans wear masks in every setting, including public settings, public transportation, at indoor and outdoor events, gatherings, and in private settings. Arizonans should wear a mask anytime they will be around other people who do not live in their household. With the holidays approaching, we ask all Arizonans to make plans for Thanksgiving that include moving your celebrations outside, reducing the size of your gathering, wearing a mask if you are around people who do not live with you, staying physically distanced, washing your hands frequently, and celebrating virtually with your loved ones if you are higher risk, elderly, sick, or have been recently exposed to someone with COVID-19. These simple steps will help slow the spread and help reduce the risk of increased cases after the holiday. So we want all Arizonans to stay safe during the holiday. Thank you. Thanks very much, Dr. Christ. It's been eight months since I issued a public health emergency in the state of Arizona. We announced it right here in this room, and I know many in our state are asking, when will it end? The answer is, that's not on the horizon. Arizona and our nation remain in a public health emergency, and getting back to normal isn't in the cards right now. Dr. Christ has just walked you through the numbers. They are rising here and all around the nation. And as we've stated before, they have been for several weeks. The truth is this has been a long haul. You can't simplify or underestimate the impact this has had on so many Arizonans. And so when I say we just aren't out of the woods quite yet, or that we need to redouble our efforts, I know that these are not easy asks, and I don't want to underestimate how big an ask it is, but it is our ask today. It's my ask. Some straight talk. There are two extreme and distinct camps out there. One side wants to lock everything down. The other side thinks it's all a hoax. Both are loud and vocal. Most of the public isn't part of either camp. 
And by the way, neither am I. Masks work. Please wear them. They are required nearly everywhere in Arizona, outside your home. Schools, restaurants, gyms, barbershops, stores, retail, and more. We've known for a while that a mask protects others. But a new study from the Centers for Disease Control released last week confirms that they also protect you. It's just one more reason why you should wear a mask. Many of the policies that we put in place over the summer are still in place today. Nearly 90% of the state is under a local mask mandate. And statewide, masks are required in restaurants, movie theaters, gyms, and more. Restaurants and movie theaters are operating at 50% capacity. Gyms are operating at 25% capacity. Bars have implemented mitigation strategies and transformed their operations to operate as restaurants. And if they haven't, they remain closed. And all of these establishments have implemented strict COVID-19 mitigation strategies, including physical distancing requirements, masks, and moving outside. And those remain in place. But there is more we can do to mitigate the spread and prepare. Today, Dr. Kara Christ and her team at the Department of Health Services are releasing official guidance for celebrating Thanksgiving safely. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday, and I want everyone to enjoy it safely. The guidance provided is pure common sense. We're asking the public to be smart and to be responsible by following public health guidelines Dr. Chris put together and limit gatherings inside your home. We've been communicating with Arizonans since February about the risks of COVID-19 and how to contain the spread. And I'd say Arizona has been a leader on this. You can't drive or go anywhere in our state without seeing messaging about masks and physical distancing. And Arizonans have been good at following the guidance. But Arizonans aren't the only ones here anymore. We have thousands of people arriving from the Midwest and East Coast and elsewhere. So we're amplifying our messaging and doubling our investment in public service announcements to ensure every individual in the state knows what steps to take to protect themselves and their loved ones from wearing a mask to getting tested to maintaining phys phys physical distance. As more snowbirds arrive and holiday visitors travel to Arizona, many are entering through the airport. It's the gateway to Arizona. I've asked Dr. Chris to work with Phoenix, Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport, Mesa Gateway Airport, and Tucson International Airport on inbound messaging around the importance of wearing masks and information on where travelers can get tested. But we need more than just messaging. We also need more specific targeted testing. So I'm also asking Dr. Christ to work directly with Sky Harbor, Tucson International, and Phoenix Mesa Gateway to launch testing sites on premise at the airport. This will allow incomers to get tested immediately with quick turnaround. She and her team will be reaching out ASAP to get this moving. On schools, I think you've heard me say this before, I think children should be in school. I want parents to have options, and one of those options should be in-person learning. Despite the best efforts of teachers and parents, no one can argue. Kids have already missed out 
on far too much learning due to this pandemic. We want to keep our schools safe. They are already required to have mask policies, but Dr. Christ will be issuing an emergency measure to make sure schools statewide are implementing those policies on school grounds and on school buses. Our frontline medical workers have been so dedicated and working around the clock since the beginning of this pandemic, nonstop, putting their own lives at risk. And we are grateful for the work they do and the skill they have. Today, I'm directing $25 million to boost and support staffing at our hospitals. These dollars can pay for higher staff costs due to the current demand and allow hospitals to reward their existing direct care employees with bonuses for their dedication. Some hope and a positive light at the end of the tunnel. The news of these successful vaccines is very positive and optimistic. And I want Arizona to be prepared, and I'll commit to you that Arizona will be prepared. Today, we've learned that the Pfizer vaccine is 95% effective, and Moderna has a vaccine that is also 95% effective. Earlier this year, Dr. Christ assembled a vaccine task force, and they have been actively working to ensure the effective distribution of these vaccines once they are available. And to support these efforts, today I'm issuing an executive order extending the enhanced surveillance advisory to collect information on these vaccinations. This will ensure that all Arizonans who want the vaccine will receive the appropriate follow-up doses at the correct time. It will also allow the state to identify and support vulnerable populations and underserved communities. And I want you to know, in addition to this focus, 100% on COVID-19 and the pandemic, there is good work going on across our state government. I was able yesterday to meet with some members of my cabinet, and I wanna report on some of the work that's happening across our state. To minimize in-person interactions during the pandemic, the Department of Transportation has evolved to serve more customers online and over the phone. Partnerships with private sector companies also are leading to more opportunities for Arizonans to receive more services virtually. The Department of Corrections, Rehabilitation and Reentry has partnered with Dr. Christ and her team to expand testing to all inmates and staff and implement mitigation measures, such as providing PPE and sanitation supplies. They've also utilized video teleconferencing to ensure staff collaboration and keep inmates connected with loved ones. At the Department of Veteran Services, Colonel Wandra Wright is implementing mitigation protocols at veterans homes and facilitating connections between families and loved ones. The Department of Administration has collaborated with state and local election officials to help ensure safe elections. They've also increased COVID-19 testing to state employees and the public. And at the Department of Child Safety, Mike Faust and the agency and the dedicated state employees have prioritized maintaining vital in-person visits to carry out Arizona's commitment to strengthen families and achieve permanency for our children in need. Since March, these efforts have led to more than 3,000 kids being reunified with their families and more than 1,700 adoptions. And more than 730 members of our brave Arizona National Guard are deployed across the state responding to this pandemic, assisting public health efforts 
protecting communities, and serving Arizonans. And with that, we'll get an update from Major General Mick McGuire. General. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon. Thanks for giving me an opportunity to update uh, the citizens of this great state on the activities of their neighbors, their classmates, their parishioners, our Arizona National Guardsmen. As many of you have heard me say, uh, over the last eight months, we have deployed nearly a thousand of them just for this response alone. And as the governor mentioned today, just short of 730 of them are still on duty and intend to continue to serve the community with our primary lines of effort in food security and sustainment and the missions that we're doing in the food bank and food distribution to rural areas and tribal communities and continue to use our small but mighty medical task force to work with nursing homes, tribal public health partners, school nurses, and the rest to quickly train them on the new antigen Binax Now test that's being uh, distributed widely under the direction of Dr. Christ. And I know, you know, over the last eight months, there's been a lot of questions about how emergency management works, how we synchronize the forces of those incident command systems at the hospitals, in our EMTs and fire departments, paramedics, and police, and how we work with counties. And ultimately, our role as the middleman is to provide gap coverage and surge capacity. And I just want to let every Arizonan know uh, I couldn't be prouder of the way we've worked together with our local communities, with our state leaders that develop policy and to put resources at the area of greatest need. And in the military, we understand that hope is the most important portion of what makes us successful. And we are not hopeless. We are confident that we have a vaccine in sight. We have a way to rapidly test folks and to keep those most vulnerable in our community safe. And every soldier and airman in the Arizona Guard is fully committed to supporting those most vulnerable. And look no further than our organization. Eight months, we have not taken a knee. Right now, of the 8,200 of us that serve, over that eight-month period of time, we have about a 3% infection rate for COVID-19. We'd like it to be zero, but it shows you that we can manage that through good mitigation and continue to meet the needs of the citizens. And to show you that this is the next greatest generation, in a typical quarter, we shoot to recruit 90 guardsmen, one a day, over a 90-day period. In the quarter from June ending in September, we were able to bring in 163 youngsters that want to serve proudly as volunteers in the Arizona Guard. They want to be your neighbors helping you out at this greatest time. And, and Governor, I thank you for letting them be uh, the next greatest generation. So thank you very much, and uh, we'll continue to serve proudly. Thanks very much, General. And again, thank you for the good work of, of the National Guard. Finally, I want to echo something Dr. Christ said earlier. We have lost 6,365 individuals to COVID-19 in the state of Arizona. Each one is an Arizonan. And I'd ask that you please join me for a moment of silence, prayer, and reflection for them and their families. Thank you. And with that, we will take some questions. Patrick. So, uh, Stephanie, uh, I want people to wear masks. Um, masks work. We have been putting dollars and resources to amplify the mask message. Uh, we've got 90% of our state under local mask mandates. And what I want to do is take something that I believe works, 
uh, that we have confidence it does work and make sure we have the widest and broadest compliance possible. And we've seen a lot of success with it at the local level where there is local buy-in and local leadership. And what I want to avoid is some of the, the division and politics that have happened uh, around this issue. So to me, the, the, the pinnacle is, is participation and cooperation. And what I've seen and from what I've heard, we're having a lot of that in the state of Arizona. That's what I want to continue. Hi, Matt. Uh, a couple questions. Uh, I'll start with COVID. You look at the trends now, and a lot of health officials will say they look very similar to that brutal summer we had. Uh, you talked about the money for the hospitals, and it's my understanding that one of the reasons hospitals were able to keep staff is because we brought people in from out of state. We had traveling nurses and staff. With the infection rate so high around the country, I don't. They don't think they're going to be able to do that anymore. So I. I and is this money enough, or basically said another way, do we have enough staff to take care of people who might be a part of this upcoming possible flight? Yeah, very, very good question, and, and also what we're anticipating. Now, I, I want to highlight how contagious the virus is, how widespread it is. But when you are looking a, across the country to where Arizona is in comparison to what would be called the hot spots states, we're in a much different situation today. What we're anticipating is just like we've been talking since August, why we put such a focus on the fall and flu shots and mitigations is that we avoid those types of spikes going forward. So I know that we have the hospital capacity. We have an incredible staff, doctors, nurses, emergency medical providers that are working right now. Is it enough money? I don't know. But if we need more money, we have access to more money. What we wanted to do is shore up our resources right now, make sure that we are prepared for whatever is coming. We won't be flat-footed, we're going to be vigilant and, and focused the entire time. So it's something that we're going to, we're going to talk about and, and update, uh, of course, the numbers on a daily basis, and as things change or as we have needs, as necessary. We'll do one more, Matt. Next question is about the election. Mm -hmm. um, for a lot of people, you are the face of the Republican Party here in the state. There's a faction of the party here in the state that is pushing a lot of Bond claims at this point about the election and the, and, and the trust that there are some Republicans in the state who are accepting the results. Do you think it lies with you to just say, hey, there was no nonsense about these elections, they were safe, uh, and, and, and put a stop to this? And I guess the, the last part of it is do you accept the results of the election? Well, first, let me say, I think I've gone out of my way uh, before the election to talk about my confidence in Arizona's election system. I think we do elections well in Arizona, and I think we are a good government state, and I stand by all those statements. I've also said that we are going to count all the votes in Arizona. We are going to allow whatever legal challenges that come to be swiftly adjudicated inside the state of Arizona, and that I will respect the election results. But, but as of right now, you don't because you're waiting for that? Well, we, there are legal claims that are being challenged in court, and everybody on the ballot has certain access rights and remedies, and if they want to push that, they are able. Uh, once those are adjudicated uh, and the process plays out, I will accept the results of the election. I do think, uh, Matt, I, I do think that you get your day in court. This isn't the first time this has happened in our country, and um, you get your day in court. We're going to keep moving. We've got a lot of people that go out there. We're going to go to Mark Phillips for 15 minutes. Mark, go ahead, please. You probably saw the Secretary of State says she's getting death threats because of, of the, these... So let me, can I address that directly? Okay, that's unacceptable completely unacceptable and I denounce any threats of, of violence against anyone in elective office or any Arizonan or American. So that's different 
than a court challenge. Okay, a court challenge will play itself out, but it's completely unacceptable, any threats of violence. I also want you to know that uh, our office is working with uh, Secretary of State Katie Hobbs for any additional DPS resources that are necessary uh, in any way to, to protect her. So I, I, I want to say that I know it's my role to communicate. Uh, I've gone out of my way to, to over-communicate on these issues, um, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, there's, there's a number of ways that you can communicate as governor. Now, we did have an election. Uh, I was in front of you before the election happened. I wasn't going to be just another politician coming to the lectern the, the week after the election before there was certainty. Uh, we still have some uncertainty left, but we've been communicating. Dr. Christ, who's our chief medical officer, has been out and about and in front of the press and doing media interviews, and she'll continue to do that. Uh, and I do think you should have an expectation that we communicate, and we'll continue to do that. I'd like to say, because I've, I've heard uh, and I'm listening to the media on this issue, we started to address this pandemic in this room eight months ago. I've been in front of you 40 plus times since then. That's an average of more than once a week. Okay, and we'll continue to be in front of you. We're gonna to go to Zoom next. We're gonna to go to Peter Seymour from KTAR via Zoom. Peter, go ahead. I know you've been saying you wanna keep everything as open as possible, of course, keep the economy going, but what metrics would you need to see in the event we have to shut down bars, restaurants, schools, and gyms? How bad does it have to get before you would even consider that? So, Peter, I, I have said before that we're on the other side of the pandemic, and uh, I think that has been misunderstood to a certain degree. I think we know a lot more today than we did in March and April. We also had a real concern about hospital capacity and PPE and ventilators, et cetera. And if you look at where Arizona is today versus where we were before the summer spike, uh, you can see in hindsight that when we did have our surge in cases and hospitalizations, it was when we all came inside, by and large, in June, when we hit the triple digits. With the knowledge that we have, and also we did put declarative mitigation steps out there from the opportunity to mandate masks, the fact that we reduced capacity inside our restaurants for a period of time, our gyms and bars were shuttered. Uh, I never held a press conference after we got out of that danger zone to say that everything had been lifted because it was not lifted. It was adjusted and moderated once we were out of the, the, the maximum challenge so that we could operate safely inside a restaurant. Like I said, bars have tra been transformed into restaurants, otherwise they're not open. Gyms are at 25% capacity with people wearing masks and the same with movie theaters. So I believe today, and we'll, we'll monitor, adjust and change, as necessary, but we've got the right mitigation steps in place, and we're going to keep pressing. We'll come back and go to Howie. Hi, Governor. Um, let me come back to the election for a bit. Uh, you know, strangers' politics. Have, there, have you seen any evidence 
in Arizona for fraud or deceit in the election? What I uh, said on this is there are challenges in front of the courts. I'm going to let the court process play out. But in terms of your question specifically, uh, any widespread uh, fraud or re uh, irregularity, th that I have not seen. I've heard about it, but I've not seen it. Um, I'm not really briefed on the specifics of what court cases are going to be put in front of the court. And it's not just in Arizona. It's, I think, also in, in Pennsylvania, uh, Michigan, and, and, and Georgia, both at state and, and federal level. I do think these should have the chance to be heard and that whatever rights or remedies available to the campaigns that they want to pursue, it's their right to do that. I've, Howie, I've said uh, and I've bragged on Arizona's election process that we're good at elections. We were one of the pioneers in terms of how we handle elections in Arizona. Uh, there are questions, and those questions sh should be answered. But I, I couldn't have been more emphatic in terms of how I think about Arizona elections and how we conduct them. Uh, the, 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 cases, the cases where there is evidence and it's in front of the court system are going to be heard. Thank you. I'm going to go to Michael for a couple of questions. And following up on that, I mean, with the silence that we've heard from you since Election Day, are you afraid that's leading to any more uncertainty when it comes to this? Because a lot of people look to you, as we mentioned, on guidance on whether or not we can trust our elections. And I, as, as I've said, uh, we can trust our elections here in Arizona. Uh, and I'm going to respect the results of the election. But we are going to let the legal process play out. I have differentiated Arizona, and I do think because our system of mail-in voting started in 1992. Uh, it's been stewarded by both Democrat and Republican secretaries of state over the decade plus that it's come to the level of success that it has right now. And it is different than other states. It wasn't implemented in six months. It wasn't an experiment or an exploration. And I also think the way we conduct things in, a, in Phoenix are different than in the city of Philadelphia. And we will let the, the legal process play out. But some of those processes that we've seen, like people, whether it be Sharpie Gate or people talking about the green button being pressed, those things that aren't actually in court right now, are those bumptious right now? Well, I, I, I've heard those same things. Uh, if you have evidence, uh, and you have witnesses, then you go to court. Th those, are the, those are the claims that will be heard, and we've got a separate and co-equal branch, uh, and there will be decisions. So do you plan on certifying the election by the November 30th, 31st? There's a process, the certification that begins at the county level. I'm going to follow the law and follow the process. Of course I am. So uh, first thing on, on the vaccines, uh, that's part of the reason Dr. Christ has put together this task force. I think it only makes sense, although I'm going to defer to public health, that we put our doctors, nurses, staff inside our hospitals, along with long-term care and our most vulnerable populations. I'm thinking of the Native American community and some of the communities that have been uh, more affected by this. And it's, it's not just the vaccine and a successful vaccine, it's vaccinations. And this is an incredible logistical undertaking. And that's why I say that Arizona will be prepared on doing this and uh, will continue to do that. And give me the second question. You've been working with the White House Coronavirus Task Force throughout this, led by Vice President Mike Pence. Have you talked to Joe Biden's Coronavirus Task Force? We already have a team in place. And if not, when do you plan on, on speaking with them? 
So we're, we're continuing to work with the White House Coronavirus Task Force. I mean, these are people whose names you all know. And, and like I said, um, l let's let the election process play out in terms of the legal challenges. But no one's, no one's reached out. And uh, Dr. Chris, do you want to talk a little bit about the vaccinations and the logistical undertaking that that will take? So we are anticipating um, by the beginning of the year to have COVID vaccine here in Arizona. Um, there are some logistical uh, things that we have to take into consideration. And that was one of the important parts of the enhanced surveillance is it's a two dose series. And whatever presentation you get, you have to have the same like if it's the Moderna, you have to have the Moderna for the second dose. So we want to make sure that we have the information to recall people the 21 to 28 days and that they get that we know what dose they get in case they go to a different provider. This is something though that we do all the time. Um, we manage the state's vaccine for children's program. So we are used to working with CDC to get vaccine out to the groups and to the areas that need to get it. So we will have an uh, advisory committee once the FDA approves it and gives the emergency use authorization. They will, pri they will tell us, the government will tell us what groups should be prioritized, but you are absolutely correct. It's going to be healthcare workers, first responders, nursing care homes, and then vulnerable populations, which could have either people that are at higher risk, such as very specific populations, or geographical areas as well. No, I'm, I've, uh, I've been prioritizing lives the entire time. And I'll continue to prioritize lives. Uh, COVID-19 has been the number one priority of the administration since we had our original press conference in this room. We have tried to do this in a way that protects lives and prioritizes them over anything else while also safely protecting livelihoods. It's resulted in some targeted decisions and steps that we've had to make to basically slow the spread, break up large group gatherings, and uh, to date, uh, with all the challenges in, in, in front of us, uh, we continue to press on that front, prioritizing lives. I've not used I've not used the word soft. Um, a light touch, I think it was. COVID is surging everywhere. Why haven't you taken more aggressive measures? Can you tell Arizonans why you're not taking any more? Well, I'm, I take targeted measures. I want to do things in a way that will actually have an effect on public health, that will slow the spread, contain the spread where possible. So they've been targeted. Uh, and they've been measured. They've not been willy-nilly. They've certainly not been political, and they haven't been guesses. They have prioritized public health. They've been in alignment with public health, and we've made the policy decisions. I've heard several people ask, have you ever tested positive for COVID-19? No. The question is, have I ever tested positive for COVID-19? The answer is no. Well, thank you very much, Brandon. And we have had, uh, of course, communication with our, our partners on the Arizona-Mexico Commission uh, in, in Sonora. We're aware of some of the real challenges that you've had in, in Yuma. And this uh, ability of real-time testing that we have right now, along with uh, the capacity and resources, is certainly something we can surge or, or introduce to parts of the state that need it. I know you have many uh, uh, incredibly hardworking people that come back and forth. I know the industry has uh, led on some of the testing and techniques there. That's been where the, the pinnacle of concern has been. Uh, and if there's uh, additional steps that, that are needed, uh, 
uh, we're at the ready to, to help solve those issues because the supply chain has caught up. The results now can happen, not in real time, but with, with a rapid response. Uh, and we want to be able to do that so that we can protect lives and allow that very critical industry uh, of agriculture in our state to continue. I, uh, I, I think the steps that we've put in place, the participation that we have has got the, the maximum amount of, of uh, compliance with, with Arizonans wearing a mask. In addition, it's, it's nearly impossible to participate in, in our economy anywhere without wearing a mask. Uh, the, the decisions that I've made have been ones that I think would improve the situation and have more people wearing a mask. If I thought, as you suggest, that there was a magic wand or a silver bullet, I would seize it. But I don't think that's the case, Bob. I don't think that's where the evidence is. There are states like uh, Ohio and Illinois and Wisconsin and New Jersey, Minnesota and Michigan that all have statewide mask mandates and their seven day case rate is higher than Arizona's and they've had the mask mandate quote unquote, they're longer. Uh, and I, am, uh, I don't second guess other governors. Every governor has got to do what they think is the, in the best interest of, of their state. And what I've wanted to see is the maximum amount of participation. And that's what I'm going to continue to encourage. So it's, it's, it's my role, uh, along with other state leaders, to make sure all, all the votes get counted. Uh, the, vo the voters vote. The voters vote. Uh, we count the votes. Uh, at this point in time in Arizona, uh, Vice President Biden has about a 10,300 vote advantage. Uh, that's about three-tenths of 1%. And there are legal challenges out there. And they have the right to those challenges. So those challenges will play out in the court and then I will respect the results of the election. Well that would I think that'd be a question. I think that would be a question for them. They are elected officials in their own right. This will this will play out. So I, I want to clarify, I want people to wear masks. 
Uh, and in Arizona, we have over 90% of the state that has local mask mandates. And by and large, we've had a lot of compliance with it. In terms of the airport, we want to provide just more resources. And of course, we expect anyone that's been exposed to the virus to, to quarantine. Uh, we believe that if there's testing that's available and it's easy with a rapid response, we'll have more participation. And I have a lot of, of faith in in Americans that if they realized that they were negative, or I'm sorry, were positive with the virus or exposed to the virus in a significant way that they would quarantine, we just want to give them a way to, to know that. And to me, I know the challenges that we've had across the country with testing. We're not in that position today. We have capacity, and we want to maximize it at points of, of entry where people can just make better decisions. It would be voluntary, yes. Thank you very much. So when are we going to see you again, Governor? Soon. Dennis, yes. Uh, hey, Hoffman, you've announced the death threats made against her very clear terms. Are you prepared to take any more steps to protect her and her family? Absolutely. We will do whatever it takes to protect Secretary Hobbs. And I think I said that the Department of Public Safety, which reports to me, is working with her office to provide all and any available protections, both personally and professionally. And, and regarding the election, you said you wanted to wait for all the legal options to play out. Do you see any lawsuit here in Arizona either before or currently making its way to the courts? Do you see any legitimacy to any of these lawsuits? Well, Dennis, I mean, I think that lawsuit's actually being heard today uh, with all the things that are on our plate. I'm not in the business of reviewing lawsuits. That's what the court, that's what our court system does. I have confidence in our court system and our judiciary. Let, I'm going to let the, they are a separate and co-equal branch. No, I've said I have confidence in our election system. I have confidence in how we conduct elections in Arizona. You want me to make a declaration uh, before the legal process plays out. And listen, uh, my name wasn't on a ballot in 2020, okay? I respect the people who put their names on a ballot. In our Senate race, the sitting senator was satisfied with the vote count, saw no legal irregularity that needed to go to the, the court, uh, and conceded. Okay? I followed up with a congratulatory call to Senator-elect Mark Kelly. In the race you're focused on, there are legal challenges. Let's let the legal challenges play out. But there's a legal challenge, and there's a right to a legal challenge. Because it's the same ballot doesn't mean that there's, there's not a legal challenge. Again, you're trying to put thoughts in my heads in my head and, and, and words in my mouth. I'm going to stand by the, the confidence I've projected in not only our election system, but our judicial system. And these, these, uh, these challenges, uh, the availability of, of rights and, and remedies to be pursued and to be heard, they're going to have their day in court. So Thank you very much, everyone. That's the time we have. We appreciate it. Thank you very so much. So I want to I close uh, by saying th thank you to everyone. Thank you to Arizonans for their commitment, for their good behavior, uh, understanding that the virus is on the rise. And I think long before I came into office, someone said that the greater part of instruction is being reminded of things that you already know. So please, in redoubling your efforts, wear a mask, stay physically distant, wash your hands, and if you're sick, stay at home and celebrate a safe Thanksgiving. Thank you all.